Hello, welcome to StudioPixel. This is the third chapter of our series Basics of Maya. Now, in the last chapter, we saw how to create some very basic modeling. And now, in this lesson, we are going to take a little step further and try to create some of the complex techniques what Maya have for the modeling. Now, this modeling technique uh, I'm going to show you is with the help of certain tools which earlier in Maya was not been considered in the uh, modeling section. They have been put into the animation menu. These nonlinear deformers are can be found in the deform menu, nonlinear deformers. Now these deforming techniques can really helpful to achieve certain complex models apart from the conventional modeling technique. Now by conventional modeling technique I am saying that uh, poly modeling which I am going to introduce you in the later chapters but these are the very useful techniques which can save a lot of time of you when while achieving some of the uh, complex models. So let's see how these actually help us. Now to start with I'm going to use uh, the bend deformer into a very primitive object cube. Now if you see I have already taken a cube and I applied bend. You can see that in the input section the bend 1 has been <coughs> added. Now if I increase the curvature from the bend you see something is happening inside the model but it's not the kind of result that I'm actually desired for like it's not actually bending in certain way that I want now there is a reason for that the bending requires the subdivision of these uh, of, of this model or this particular uh, cube which is actually lacking so even if I increase my amount more than 3 like say uh, to select the curvature press middle mouse on your viewport and drag and you can see the amount of the curvature is actually increasing but my object is not bending the reason is that my object doesn't have sufficient amount of subdivision to get that bending out of this cube. So if I select my <coughs> cube and then go to, go to the polycube 1 and I increase my height subdivision by selecting on it and again middle mouse drag and you can see I have already increased the bending uh, sorry uh, increase the subdivision and now if I go to the bend 1 and increase the curvature and you can see now this curvature is actually getting the supportive uh, bend or supportive uh, vertex or sorry supportive subdivisions to to make this particular uh, object bend or So this is something really, really interesting that what I have done uh, over here. Now this is, uh, you need to understand one thing that I have changed the basic structure of my primitive even after applying a nonlinear deformer. Now here I would like to ask you to concentrate on the name nonlinear which means you can go back and forth. That means these nonlinear deformers can be used in such a way so that we can get back to our construction history of the primitive objects. Like uh, in this case, uh, my, uh, I have used a cube and I have increased my polycubes uh, subdivision level after applying the my uh, modify, uh, sorry, uh, bend deformers. Now this is really interesting and this is where 
this nonlinear bend or nonlinear deformers are so much interesting to work with. So that means I'm starting up from the beginning itself again. I took a cube, let's say I increase the height by increase the scaling and then I apply bend. I forgot to apply uh, or increase my object subdivision level but still I can go back to subdivision height and I can increase the number of subdivision and then I come back to the bend and select the curvature and now I can bend it. Even after I bend it or after applying increasing the number of curvature I can go back to my polycube subdivision and I still can you know increase or decrease my subdivision of uh, my primitive object. Now this is something which is really really interesting in terms of using the nonlinear uh, deformers. Now as you can see I have uh, already applied a certain uh, uh, deformers. Let's get inside the deformers and see what are the options that we have in in bend. Now apart from the curvature you can see there are some envelope, low bound and high bound. Now if we go to the wireframe view you can see if I select this and if I move my object just to see what we have over here as a gizmo of the nonlinear bend deformers. So you can see there is a midpoint and there is an upper half of this particular gizmo and there is a lower half. So this upper half and lower half are the low bound and the high bound options over here what we have got. So let me get back to my original state and then select this uh, gizmo and go to the bend and if you use the low bound and increase it to zero from minus one you can see you are actually nullifying the lower bound bending. So if I go to my shaded view you can see that my half of the cube is not being affected by the bend deformers. Now this is something really interesting and which might be able to uh, which might be very very difficult to achieve while you know uh, uh, using uh, conventional modeling technique like extrude which we are going to use it in the later chapters. So these things are really interesting while you can actually use them for creating these complex models. Like I can create an archway very easily by using this whereas I need a certain level of straighten a uh, pillar on the base but on the top of it I can uh, have a bend uh, arch arch uh, uh, on the upper half of this particular shape. Now, if you select the deformers and go to attribute editor, you can see there's the same <coughs> options which you can get over here also, which we we are getting over here. So the envelope one is really interesting which can nullify the entire effect of this uh, deformers. So that means we can really uh, turn it on and off uh, about the about the uh, any any deformer that we are going to use. Now here is a very interesting point that I'd like to tell you guys is that rest of the nonlinear deformers are also working absolutely same way in terms of the application but each and every one have a very different kind of outcome. So our plus point is we can combine these two for creating any specific uh, complex objects which we might not be able to uh, uh, create while using conventional modeling techniques. Now let me do something like that which uh, will mix two of these nonlinear deformers and create a specific uh, kind of shape. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to delete this. Now, here is one more problem which I'm going to show you that I cannot, if I delete my band deformers, you are going to lose this uh, shape. So, let me clear this up over here itself. If I want to move this particular arch, uh, half arch or this particular shape, I cannot move them. So, what I have to do, I have to take the deformer gizmo as well as my model and then I have to move. We can avoid this by deleting the history of this particular object which actually been stored over here under the inputs. So go to selecting your by selecting your object go to edit delete by type history or you can use the shortcut of alt plus shift plus D. Now if you select the object and move you can see your object is actually retaining the shape that we have actually wanted to. So but the problem is as we have deleted the history we don't have this uh, uh, options of the bend and the other things which we have used earlier. So you have to be very very careful about when we are going to delete the history. So I would recommend it deleting the history should be the last option before you are cleaning up your particular scene or you are absolutely sure where your shape has been achieved the desired shape has been achieved I'm going back to that uh, earlier stage I'm selecting this uh, bend the former handle and deleting it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use twist at first place now select the object and apply twist go to the twist option now here there are two options one is the start angle one is the end angle now I can use any of this to make the twist happening either from the base or from the top now here also I have my high bound and low bound option now if I want I can in increase the low bound to from minus 1 to 0 to make this particular object act like half of its portion has been affected by this uh, twist and half of it doesn't. Now the interesting part is go to 4 by uh, to wireframe view and if you select the gizmo only remember gizmo and I can shift my gizmo a little upwards and I can see that I actually can make a twist in a specific portion not even only half or 50 50 divided I can actually can uh, make this particular twist happening in a very specific portion of my model now this is really really interesting because what happened if I want to create a table which I have created in the earlier uh, chapter which is a very basic one and I want to design it in such a way that the top portion of this uh, the leg of the table should be twisted like this now this is really interesting and you can understand now by using this you can achieve lot of complex modeling uh, models uh, very easily which uh, you might not be able to uh, achieve in a conventional uh, modeling techniques now let me show you that how we can use it with another uh, another nonlinear deformers. Let's suppose we have already used blend, but we are not going to use it bend right now. We are going to use the flare option. Now, sorry, I have to use uh, I have to select the object and then use flare. Now, select the flare. Now. The options are a little different over here. It's called start flare X, Z and end flare X and Z. Now if I use the start flare, it is as usual like using the bottom part to affect the it's it's going to you it's going to affect the bottom side of the uh, object. And if I want the top to be affected, you have to use the end flare. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use end flare and I'm reducing the 
flare amount. Also, I am not going to inflate but deflate this particular object. Now see, this model surely cannot be achieved uh, with the with this amount of perfection in, in conventional extruding and twisting uh, things. Even further, if I want to go and use a bend modifier on top of this. So, select the bend. Go to curvature. And yes, I can use. But again, I want to... I don't want to use my... Uh, low bound so I have successfully create a particular shape which bend which has been used through bend twist as well as a flare now this is really interesting now I want to duplicate this one so actually if you want to delete any any sort of a, a uh, modify uh, sorry uh, any any particular deformers in between you can simply select the uh, that particular gizmo and you can hit delete which is actually going to remove the effect of your object of or from your object now here you can see I have selected the flare handle and hit the delete button the flare effect from that particular uh, from this particular object has been removed so there is only twist and the bend has been remained now this is really interesting that how uh, non-destructive this technique can be and how we can you know change our objects uh, structure while manipulating these uh, gizmos or or different deformers cool so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it by watching control D. Now while duplicating you can see my history has been automatically deleted. So here is my uh, suggestion for you guys who will be working uh, with this technique that while you are creating that particular object do not delete the main structure. Retain them and uh, you just they make a duplicate copy of this which will actually create the uh, same object while removing the history all the history that you have used by this you can actually retain a particular copy of your old stuff in 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 your in your scene file or maybe while you are working and once you are absolutely sure about your model and you are very much happy that uh, your whatever whatever the kind of shape that you have achieved and uh, then you can uh, delete the history or maybe delete the entire uh, structure from your scene so these and remember all these non-linear uh, deformer options are actually very much are heavily depending on how much subdivisions you are actually having inside your basic object if you don't have any subdivisions I'm sorry you won't be able to see the desired result over here like if you like let's suppose I I take up a plane and I want to show you how the wave deformer actually works now by default in plane we are already have subdivision level from height and weight now to see what is the exact use of the wave I would like you guys to increase the amount of subdivisions over here and then apply wave after that you go to the wave and increase the amplitude and immediately you can see you have a nice ripple sort of effect which actually okay fine now if I increase my offset value you can create a very nice ripple effect from this 
particular wave deformers as i have mentioned earlier this one is actually all of these uh, properties that we are over, we are looking at like bend or flare or twist all of them are actually animatable and we can create a lot of nice small animations from here that's why this particular deformers are were associated with uh, animation menu earlier stage of Maya you can see go to animation and you can still get the deformers uh, menu over here but later on as people have been using this for a longer period of time in modeling also and is very helpful for creating certain uh, kind of modeling very easily apart from the uh, in, in against the conventional modeling technique this has been included inside the modeling section also so you can try out the other ones like squash and sign and I think I have uh, already show you the other things those are the almost kind of similar and you can try it out for creating certain uh, the uh, certain complex models on your own hope you enjoy this thank you very much let's see in in the next chapter and the other part of the modeling techniques thank you and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter